What's up everybody? I'm Jeremy from Weld Tech Designs and today is a blast from the past. Right here, this is where it all started, all you Chevy guys. You guys need to give a big high five to Rick because Rick is the one that started all this craziness with the Chevys when he came to us back in 2016 and was like, I have a Quigley van, but I need it to be way better. And that's where we came up with the Quigley, the coilover suspension for the Quigley van. See, so without further ado, you know, back with us is Rick. So Rick, you've had this van now for three years. What have you been doing with it? Because, it, I mean, it looks like it's never been off road a day. Really? Yeah, I mean, I, and by the amount of dirt and debris inside <laughs> and everywhere else on this thing, I mean, it looks like you've been having fun with it. So what do you mainly use this van now that you've had it for a couple years? Well, mainly we use it for transporting my family back and forth from the river, but we take it off roading out there, out in the desert, it does great. We've taken it to Pismo a couple of times. That's been awesome. It does amazing in the sand. And now we're getting ready to go to Utah and uh, hit some snow. And that was the first trip I ever took it to when I first got it from Jeremy. Uh, it was amazing. We took it out to Brian Head and that's where we're headed to. And uh, there should be a storm on the way up there. And I have no fear because this thing just eats the ice and has no problem in the that, snow. I have to say that was one of my favorite pictures of that you sent us with all the snowboards like in the ladder going up. It is like a perfect snowboard holder. It definitely you know, doubles up the snowboard the rack. It's awesome. But let's go cruise around this thing. If you guys haven't seen this before, let's go take a look at it. This um, is the first bad idea. Yeah, that's what first I said. One. That's what we were just saying. <laughs> I said, I want all you guys to give Rick a big high five because before this, we were like, Chevy's like, okay, yeah. And he called us and I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Why not do something <laughs> silly? We can do that. And so, you know, that's just snowballed from there and doing and creating. I mean, when we did this, we were like, there's no way, we don't wanna do four wheel drive conversions. It's just <laughs> not our thing. We're gonna stick to the two wheel drive Fords, maybe build a lift kit for the two wheel drive Chevys and now, I don't know, we might be the king of Chevys, you know? I mean, who out there is building something better and cooler than what we're doing? So, one thing is you guys walk around this thing and you'll see this is our very, this is the OG um, SEMA bumper, our winch bumper, and you can see that this has changed a little bit to what we're doing now as far as our stealth tube winch bumper. Um, this is definitely a little bit bigger, a lot more lighting on it or different light combinations. But you'll see one thing that has not changed one bit is still running these awesome light force lights on there. And we love these HTX, these are the 230 millimeter lights. They have the HID on the inside in the middle and then the LEDs on the out. Ooh, excuse me, that Red Bull's coming back up. You know, today's video <laughs> is powered by Red Bull. Would you like a Red Bull? Everybody would like a Red Bull. Um, but these lights are amazing, super awesome. And you'll see he's got the big, 50 inch light force bar up on the top. And then down here on the bottom, we have the two 12 inch ones. So a lot of really cool lights. And then up in the front, a Smitty built winch. So a lot of really cool parts. So some of the stuff you can see has changed a little bit, but not very much. Still running off them. Oh, little man, cannot speak. Awesome method wheels. And once again, wrapped in the Toyo RT tire. You know, we love our method wheels. We love our Toyo tires. We love our light force lights. Some things just don't change um, on here. And you can see all the sponsors that he's still representing. The only thing that we're missing, you know, is a big American flag on there. Maybe we'll have to make him something else. Um, rock sliders, still awesome. How many of you guys have rock sliders on your van? And as we jump in here, you'll see the very clean van that barely gets used. I mean, this thing is completely babied. So if you wanna know, you know, this is just a parking lot cruiser, you know, as you can tell by the amount of dirt in here. And I have to say one thing that I love about this, and this is the only one we've ever done one in, and it's amazing and when he told me he wanted to do it i was like you are completely nuts like why would you ever want to put a roll cage in a van like why like what are you gonna go do with this that you want to cage in it 
and I have to say as I jump back into this thing, I just love it. I love how it's there, but it's not. And if you look up into the roof, you can see how it's just seamly integrated. You kind of even barely even notice it's there. Um, and since it's been here, you can see he's added a television. You can still see the awesome kicker sound system up in the top. And you know what I love? You're gonna have to get this, you know what? It's still got the Legos just chilling in the window. You know, we got it in the beanie. My son uses a, the roll cage as a closet. He's got the beanie tucked in up there. Oh, he does, yes, back in there. You know, just hang clothes up in there. And I love it because when I jump into my van, I always find a ton of stuff the kids have just shoved in the most random places. And I'm like, what are you guys doing? I will say one thing, Rick. So we did the um, the Windy Nation solar s the inverter, and that was one thing you were saying is that you feel like you need more power in this, correct? Absolutely. So I think 3,000 watts would probably be ideal. I think that's only a 1,500 watt converter. That about charges your phone or can maybe make a cup of coffee. So that's good information because, see, I am yet to add an inverter or solar or anything of that to mine. So I love getting the feedback from people that are actually using it to say like, hey, this is what you want to do. This is how much power because when it comes to that, I don't know. So if you guys, I would love to hear what you guys are running in your vans as far as what size inverter um, to power your all the stuff that you're running in there. Because we know we just, the more electronics just keep yeah. going. It's like, oh, add this, add this. The best part about the solar is my battery has never died, ever. And that's what's great is you can go from the house batteries or to the car batteries right. and switch and connect it, but, them together. But I've, my son's left the lights on or I've left the lights on the inside and a bunch of other stuff on the inside. And the next morning the car was dead. I went and switched the batteries over and started right up. So, so what is what is the one thing I know we've talked about perhaps changing the roof rack, but what is like if you were going to build a van again or for somebody that's looking to start building a van, what is something that you would do different? I mean, I know you love the diesel in this. The diesel versus the gas is, you know, a lot of people ask, oh, I want the diesel. I mean, you love the diesel. How Absolutely. I, I mean, I don't know if anything, like I would have maybe shopped a little harder to find a passenger van to start with. So the windows wouldn't have been such a difficult task because that was probably, I don't know, I feel like probably our biggest challenge to make it look a little bit more like it was a, a commuter van as opposed to a cargo van from starting from scratch. But if I were gonna do anything different, I think we touched on the inverter and like just having a little bit, being a little bit more capable on the inside to like live out of it um, would be one thing. And then... Uh, but now how often are you guys generally living in it versus... Never, it's only like a day or two camping trip, but it's just, okay. you know, I mean, really, I wanna be spoiled. I, I have everything else I want. I wanna make a cup of coffee with my Nespresso. Um, quality problems. Uh, from from like a, a actual capability standpoint, I wouldn't do anything different. The the clearance, the lockers, the diesel, the power that I have, changing the gears, everything. Towing, you know, I towed a 28 foot toy hauler with a you know a Can Am in it. You know, 500 miles each way, no problem. And I got decent gas mileage. I wish the rack was a little shorter because the high rails don't necessarily benefit me as much as I thought they were going to be because I don't put stuff up there because it's so tall. We should have put the crane up there is what we should have done. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so I know that that's a big thing is people are always asking, they call us and they say, well, I'm looking to build a van. I want to start with a cargo van. And you know, that's funny that you mentioned that because that's one big thing that typically I'll recommend to people is I recommend, hey, start with a passenger van because we had to do the pro air system. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll throw up a card right here and you guys can go check out the whole pro air install. But if you start with a passenger van, it's gonna give you all the windows inside it. It's also gonna give you the interior built out in it. And then it's gonna give you that rear heating and air conditioning. It's easier, in my opinion, to block or board up a window, double tint a window so that you can't see in it versus the other way of, you know, having to build out the hole inside of your van. Yeah. Now, the one downfall of it is, is if you do do a passenger van and you want to remove everything, I will tell you, pulling the seat tracks from the van is a nightmare and that is a weekend in itself. So be prepared if you are gonna remove the seat tracks from your Chevy Express van, plan it for a weekend. It is not a couple hour deal whatsoever. So that's the only benefit in going with a cargo van is you're gonna have that like 
nice clean floor that you want to be able to mount stuff in or do that but otherwise like you'll see how we had to install the windows and cut holes in it and if you guys totally just are lost in what we're talking about we'll throw up another card here where you can go back to 2016 in the DeLorean time machine <laughs> to go visit our 2016 SEMA build where I got to meet Rick and we took on this awesome project and just had fun. We didn't even know what we were doing. We were just building, having a good old time, building crazy stuff. So I see you do have a war wound here. What's this? Oh, What's I, this? I cut a little too close pulling into a gate at school. Dang it. It's always, you always it's never wish a good that, one. Yeah, it's you always wish one. that it would be like, oh, I was going through these rocks. And, yeah, no. No. All those rock scars are on the underside. underside. You can't see it. So I haven't put it on its side yet. Almost. Oh, so <laughs> that'll be an interesting conversation. Another thing that's cool, so, and that you can see that is definitely different is on this one, we ran the Fiamma awning on the outside of the rack in comparison to like now how we did it on our SEMA build on our Velocis van build where we put integrated the awning into the rack to just make less things protrude off the rack. So you can see the evolution of things as we've kind of come along and you know started building more and more of these. We've changed it. I know that was one thing also that we talked about. So on this, we run the double gas can rack and a lot of times now we're just running the platform where you can run this or a box. And that was one thing else you were saying is that you probably don't use this as much as you thought you would and yeah, you'd like to go not. to a box. Yeah, I would definitely go to a toolbox. I have a tool crate inside there that just takes up space in my storage area because I carry tools with me and I, I clearly don't carry any gas with me. So or that'll be the me. next thing we'll have to change out on his next trip down here to beautiful San Diego on the river bus. Um, other than that, I mean, other than just needing a bath, I mean, this thing is still awesome. It doesn't need a bath. <laughs> so <laughs> how do you like, so I know a lot of this is another question I see with this rear brake light. How do you like that? Um, or um, the brake light camera. I actually changed the camera because with the gas cans here and the tire here, it was really difficult to see out of here. And I upgraded the head unit after the fact as well. And upgrading the head unit and putting that camera in really helped me out quite a bit because parking this thing was never easy. And now I can uh, back it in significantly easier with that camera because I could see everything. Before with the camera down here where it's stock, it uh, was really troublesome. and not effective. I could see the trailer hitch from up there with that camera and I could see, uh, you know, anybody I'm parking on the sides with. So it makes it a lot better. So I'll have to show them the newest thing now is the brand motion camera, which goes it pretty much in the same spot. You'll see I have it mounted above my third brake light. But what's really unique and cool about that product is now when I look in my rear view mirror, it's 100% out the rear view mirror. Mm -hmm. So as I look into it, you get to, you know, a full view outside. You don't necessarily have to be in reverse to see out the back. And then it also has a forward facing camera. I like that he just told me that right now. I just, I, I put it, I just, it's like a year old. I Thanks, just bro. put this in like three months ago for our SEMA build, I just found out about it as well. I've been learning at the expense of, you know, Germany's You know, now I'm like, hey, you know, I'm like, <laughs> dude, this thing's awesome. We'll have to go put them in there and be like, man, look at this. It's even got a forward facing camera, you Perfect. know I mean? Yeah. What do you yeah. need that for? What's that? I get, cause you don't have a phone book to sit on when you drive? No, I need to, I need to, I need a boost, you know, so I can see <laughs> above the seat, you know? Yeah. But what's funny now is everybody, and even Austin's driven in there in the pack, and he says, man, now that I'm driving, I find myself just watching the camera constantly <laughs> because it's like a television right. now. And I guess I got to figure it out. I got to read the instructions, but that's the other thing too, <laughs> is I'm supposed to know. I don't know, you know, <laughs> I just wing it, but you're supposed to be able to like, you can hook in like your phone to play a movies on it too. Oh, that's cool. So. I haven't got there yet, you we know, but that, we have that feature on our new head unit. With yeah, the, see, I don't, so, I don't, but we don't, we can't watch it while you're driving. It's not allowed. No, never watch a movie while you're driving. That would be <laughs> awful. So on, we look over the back of this, a ton more light force lights. We're also running the switch pro panel in here, which is awesome. Um, I see. Oh, if you do, do build a van, put a light up there so you can see behind you at night. That would be awesome. You know what? See, I guess I did learn something because we put two oh, of them there. Oh my God, look at that. Wait, uh, look at that. <laughs> I mean, we might as well just go over here. So, we did, we put two of them up on there now behind us. Because I will tell you that's the one thing 
once you have all the seats in there, it is impossible to see out the rear view mirror. <laughs> and then you tint your windows, and then it's like, I can't see anything. I might as well not even have a window yeah, you know, in really, there. The windows are no good in the back ever. So that is why you can see my little brand motion camera just chilling up there. You know, if, if it was on, we'd be like, hey, what's up, Jeremy? You know, <laughs> driving in there. Um, so yeah, the only thing we recessed your lights because we knew you were going to be running into stuff. You know, but you could actually turn those at an angle and point them back. Yeah, I thought about doing that. Uh, that, that would make it. You'd have to like climb up on there and like rotate that, loosen up a bolt. You know, that would, yeah. I'd probably avoid the warranty. Yeah. You know one thing that <laughs> I did on yours now that I'm looking at it and completely missed it on mine though, is I put a bunch of tie downs on yours and I had put none on mine. I did not. Hey, you want to know something great though? Is that if it's not taller than the bar, those tie downs don't work. If it's not taller than the, the, that top bar, the 10 inches, it, the tie downs don't work very well. You have to, I loop oh, like, around the bars. Because it has to protrude above that so it doesn't put any pressure down. I figured you were just gonna run like a big old cargo net on there. Well, the know? very first trip I ever took in this van was to go remodel my house in Havasu. So I did have a wheelbarrow and a bunch of cement bags and all kinds of other crazy shit up there. And those were great for that. But it has to be a, above the 10 inches that the rack is. If it's not above the 10 so inches. So if you're not carrying giant stuff on your yeah. roof rack, that's really difficult to get up there. If you're not building a house, there, yeah, yeah then exactly. Like if you ever try and load cement or a wheelbarrow on top of your pan. I mean, even like those Arctic coolers like I have that I run up there, I don't really want to put that up there by myself. No, so yeah. <laughs> and I, you know, and that's the thing is a lot of people always ask like, you know, I mean, as far as the seats, we redid the seats in your van and my van. And people always tell me, well, you know, the seats are $1,500 a seat, which is expensive for a seat. But then they'll say, well, but they're okay to willing to spend, you know, three, four, five thousand dollars on a roof rack. And use I use my seat every, every time. Yeah. I am telling you guys, like, I hardly ever use my roof rack. The main purpose of my roof rack is to hold my awning. I feel like I use yes. my awning the more than anything. Um, and now that I've added a rooftop tent to it, I figure I'm gonna, I'll start adding, you know, I'll start using it a little bit more now because I can actually camp up there. Yeah. Previous to having the rooftop tent up there, it was a Christmas tree hauler. So that was it. Yeah. So that's it. We wanted to sh walk around, show you Rick's van, show you Rick and be like, hey, this is Rick. We know a lot of people have seen this van and want to get a little bit more familiar with it. So there it is. And I guess he still likes his van. So that's always a good thing. So. And I still it. like him. Yeah. It's even more important, right? Yeah, you know. Merry Christmas. Yeah, Merry Christmas to all you guys and we will see you later.